welcome back to another episode of azure devops have you ever tried to integrate your ui tool or any ticketing tool for that matter with your azure devops to automate your infra or application deployment so for example this is one ui tool i have created using html and javascript so for example i am going to create on aws bucket and let me name my bucket so for example test episode 9 the us learning something like that and i can choose one region for example let me take singapore and just i can click on submit and basically i'll get a pop up like this and it has one id with me basically the run id of my pipeline i can take this i can click on okay then i can click on check my existing run let me paste this value which was 83 get rid of that comma and check status and as you see it's in progress if i go to my azure devops project then pipelines somehow it gave an error but doesn't matter it triggered our pipeline so let's get started by creating everything from scratch what are the things do we need obviously a devops project and once you go inside your project you can put your pipeline files and other files in the azure repo itself or in github or other places as we have discussed in earlier episodes for this case i have placed my file directly in azure git it's here and it looks something like this let me explain and obviously as usual i'll be giving the link where you can download this code from github and let me explain that what it is doing and it is very simple as we have seen multiple times already the trigger the pool where it is going to run stage one job inside the stage then simply i'm executing some shell scripting and this is what it is it is taking the bucket name and it is taking another argument which is called bucket region as we have seen in our variable section of pipeline in earlier episodes it is simply creating a bucket nothing else and let's create a new pipeline now from this go to pipelines click on new pipeline and this time i am going to choose as your repo as i have discussed this is my project and i'll be choosing existing yaml pipeline because i have already written that in and this is my pipeline file click on that click on continue and you will see the code is being already taken i am not going to run it now because i'll be doing it from api click on save and this is the default name it automatically takes go into edit mode and unfortunately microsoft didn't yet change the option to change the name directly from the edit mode which is really bad i need to go into the triggers mode i can change the name from here name anything logical and obviously i need to authenticate and i am going to link one variable group this variable group basically has the aws access id and secret key as we have done in earlier episodes i'll be linking that and i'll be saving this i'll be not queuing this click on save go to pipelines you will not find any pipeline which has not run yet so you need to click on all here it is click on that go into edit mode again because we need to add two variables basically that is bucket name and another is bucket region obviously you can have multiple variables depending on your need click on variables click on new variables and you need to provide this name i have this name with me bucket name you can put any random value and don't forget to check this option let users override this value because whenever i am triggering this from api i need to update this value every time i run i need to update this value to create unique buckets this will be basically for the front end users who do not know what is going behind the scene they will be giving only name and they will be choosing whatever defined in your form or any tool you use click on okay i need to add another one which is for region and that variable is basically bucket region copy that paste it here any sample value and don't forget to check this again for the second click on okay and click on save now variables are set variable group is linked credentials are there and we are almost ready to go to do a api trigger basically the format looks something like this you need to do a post api call to this link you will need organization id i'll tell you that 
will need to your project id project means your as your devops project then you need your pipeline id how do i get that and then rest of the url can be like this you can copy this value i have already copied that it's something here and i can change this organization id for example if i go to my azure devops whatever you find after dev.azure.com that is your organization id for me it is das learning let me paste it here then i need to put my project id once you are inside your project in your organization once you go into your project whatever it is coming after your organization copy that it is das learning project for me paste it after your organization then api pipelines it will be fixed i need to update the pipeline id so how do i get that go to pipelines go to all pipelines select your pipeline in the uri you will find definition id equals to something that is 11 for me that is basically pipeline id i need to take that i need to paste it here and my url is ready dev.azure.com slash your organization id slash your project id then your pipeline number and obviously i need to authenticate with azure devops i cannot run it just like that for that i will need one token or something like that click on this human icon over here which calls user settings before your name click on this go to personal access tokens i will be opening this in a new tab so you need to click on this new token click on that any name for that episode 9 any expiry date whichever you want to choose 30 days is fine and i will be going with custom defined list privilege method is always preferable select custom defined scroll down a little bit in the permission section and you need to choose this build you should give read and execute permission that's all you do not need to give any other permission click on create you will get one code over here click on this copy button copy it in a notepad or something like that paste it there it is your personal access token obviously the user has to have execution access otherwise it will fail click on close we are almost good to go first i will demonstrate this api execution using one powershell and how the structure looks like i'll be also defining that we have already discussed that our url looks something like this and obviously if you execute your pipeline by posting this with a proper authentication you can execute that but if you want to pass some custom values like variables or something like that you need to put one json body and that json looks something like this it is the starting of the json line number 9 and there is one key called resources you do not need to go into all those technical details resources you need to define from which repository and which branch it should be triggered from i'll not say triggered will be referenced from that means whenever it is checking out which branch it should check out and get all the codes so in inside the repository i'm giving self self means the repository which is containing this yaml pipeline definition itself then reference to your branch in my case it is master then i am also defining some variables using this variable key and this is one variable which we have defined at the pipeline level which is the bucket name another one is your bucket region these are my variables and whatever value i need to pass along with that this is my bucket name for example and this is my bucket region once your json is ready your link is ready you will need your personal access token converted into base64 encoded and there are many methods you can use to encode it using base64 in powershell this is one line in the powershell whichever you get in my repository that is already having that as you see over here and it will encode that value for you and let me explain how this sample ui works so i have defined one variable called bucket name i have given some name then i am defining my region obviously i need to give that access token which i have copied now copy this paste it here the organization name i am taking as one variable the project name i am doing this because i am creating the url dynamically before invoking i am also attaching the project name and the pipeline id and obviously i need to change this pipeline id this is 11 this is my pipeline id 
as I am using PowerShell, basically the JSON body looks something like this. It's the exact similar format of that JSON, but in PowerShell object format. I am converting my PowerShell object into one JSON text, which is being stored in target body variable. Then I am using invoke rest method. You can pretty much use curl, postman or any other API method. If you are using service now or any other tool, that tool should be able to do that API call. And I am providing my URL. I am specifying which method, get or post. In our case, this is post. And obviously, I need to put some headers. And how the headers looks like, it looks something like this. Authorization, then it is basic and your base 64 version of your token. It is being stored in this variable and that variable is being used here. The complete value will be passed as header. And in the body section, I'm giving that JSON, which we have created over here. And obviously the content type is application JSON. And once you do that, you will get a response and you are good to go. And let me open this UI. This is my UI. Let me right click and go into edit mode and let me invoke that. And basically I'm taking the ID from the response. You get multiple options, which looks something like this in PowerShell. It gives ID name, resources and many other things. These are the parameter or parameters it gives basically. And I'm taking the ID because I am interested in the ID. Let me click on execute and I get one build ID over here, which is 84. That's fine. Let's go to our pipeline. And as you see, I have not even refreshed it. It is showing one new run. Click on that, go inside that and let's see how it is going. Pipeline is finished as I see. And let me go into the bucket creation. And obviously, as it is showing that URL, that means it has successfully created that bucket. And let us verify that in the AWS console. And let's go to this AWS S3 console. Let me click on refresh. And here is our bucket. And PS1 stands for basically, it has been created from PowerShell. And what about that cool UI, which we have shown at the beginning? And you can completely skip this because we have already triggered it, but this UI can be a little bit fun to work with. For this UI, basically I have used this HTML. I'm not going into all of those details. Here is my main JavaScript. I need to update the pad. For some reason, my base 64 encode function is not working properly. So I'll be directly using the PowerShell method to convert it to base 64 and I'll be using that directly. Let me get that value from this. Here is my value because it was already encoded. You can use this PowerShell function. Let me copy that and let me paste in this main.js. And it follows the same format. Your organization is given over here. Your DevOps project pipeline ID for our case, it is 11 now. And that's all. Again, it is using the same method to create the JSON and it is doing the API call. Your dev.azure.com typically organization pipeline your pipeline ID and that's all. As my JS is updated, let me refresh my web page now and let me put one bucket name. I can choose one region for that matter, maybe Mumbai for now. And you can restrict your users with your specific settings. And if I click on submit now, I'll get a pop-up and my run ID is 85 now. I can click on OK and I have created one button over here to check the existing run. Let me click on this and let me paste or let me give 85, which was our run ID and let's check the status. And as it is in progress, let us go to in the pipelines. This is our pipeline. And obviously it is in progress because it is running. And if we check the previous one, for example, 84 and check status, 84 is succeeded. Obviously that was done, which was executed from PowerShell. And this is again another API call. And let me quickly explain that API. It looks similar. And it is not using the post method. Instead, it is using a get method and URL goes same format, your organization, then your project. It is your fixed text APIs build builds and you need to give your run ID. This is our run ID and whatever API version we are using. And once we invoke that using a get method, we will be getting one response back. And that response looks something like this. It gives you URI start time reason for that run it was manual and obviously it will give a status and we are only printing the status in our screen and if i check the 85 again check 
it is succeeded now let's go to our pipeline click on your job click on your task and it has successfully created another one let's go here refresh the bucket list and somewhere that html should be there yeah it is here and it is in mumbai previous one was in singapore so basically that's it you can now automate your daily life using as your devops api trigger and you can integrate that with any tool which has api capability by saying that let's wrap up thanks for watching and see you in some next amazing videos